Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Friday, July 5th, 2019. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's get right to it. First, the anomalies map from the NOAA NESDIS data set updated yesterday, the 4th of July. And uh, there's a few important things to point out once again. Uh, first of all, a little bit of a cooling going on. A little tiny line. Let's make that thicker, shall we? A little bit more cooling going on down here in the eastern Pacific. Uh, generally speaking, we're losing the El Nino. Kind of a weak El Nino signature overall, warm, neutral, whatever you want to call it. The bottom line is it is not going to be a major factor at all, and there is not enough time for it to become a major factor. So for the most part, uh, I won't be talking about uh, the El Nino uh, over here too much longer as it's really not going to be a major player for the season ahead. Uh, on the other hand, this warm Atlantic overall probably will become a major player in the rest of the hurricane season, especially when we broaden out and look at the wider picture here. Notice something very important. All the warm water compared to normal. Believe me, this water is not warm up here, but it's warm compared to average, the long-term average. Uh, it's an anomaly. It is a departure from the normal or the average, whatever you want to call it. So you've got this very warm North Atlantic, uh, and a little bit of a you know, warming here just east or west of the Iberian Peninsula, uh, Spain and Portugal. So if you kind of connect all of this, that's more of that warm AMO signature. It's not classic and the perfect example, but we're not seeing... Uh, cold water in the North Atlantic relative to average. Now we have colder water over here in the subtropics and then warmer water down here in the deep tropics. And that is the type of pattern that you would look for when wanting to know, is there a possibility that we could have an active hurricane season? It doesn't guarantee one, but these are the clues that you look for, and that's one of them. So just wanted to point that out. The players are definitely lining up, as it were, more every day, every week that goes by, uh, pointing towards what could be quite a very busy latter August through parts of October. So we'll deal with that as it comes, just just pointing it out. All right, here in the Central Pacific, uh, Barbara has meandered uh, its way into that area of responsibility, which I guess it's all part of the... Um, well, this is the Central Pacific Hurricane Center in Honolulu. I thought that they had consolidated it with the National Hurricane Center in Miami, but whatever. Uh, it's all good. There's Barbara. Barbara will not be an issue for people in the Hawaiian Islands, even though the cone of uncertainty, the forecast cone, whatever you want to call it, uh, aims the remnant circulation towards the Big Island in several days. It'll be nothing more than just a passing shower. Uh, a change in trade wind direction, something like that, no big deal. Nothing outlined in the Atlantic just yet, but that might change going down the road. If we look at the wide satellite shot here, beautiful work here, as always, from Levi Cowan and TropicalTidbits.com. And you know I had that little Patreon thing, that little title card at the beginning of this video. Uh, Levi is also a uh, Patreon um, beneficiary. Uh, as is the Weather Nerds site, and there are a couple of other people I can't think of offhand. But um, if you're not familiar with Levi's work, he's also on Patreon, and it supports, I mean, he's a college student still, uh, and we all need your support us in this independent field. But anyway, I want to point that out because this is remarkable that we're able to see this kind of satellite animation, and I thank Levi for it. It's readily available free of charge. Uh, and you see here in the Eastern Pacific, Invest Area 95E, the E stands for East Pacific. The 95 is just a number that is given to designate it as an area of interest. And we'll see if this develops further. It should, and I'll move off generally to the west-northwest with time. And so you folks along the Baja, mainland Mexico over here, still no worries. There's just a little bit of moisture now starting to creep up into parts of the desert southwest. Uh, later on in the month, the monsoon should become active, and I'm hoping that I can get out here for a few days 
and observe and study that and bring that to some of our um, our patrons. That would be something a benefit of becoming a patron. Um, I'm really fascinated in that area of the country, uh, especially when tropical cyclones get involved. And we'll talk about that later on. There'll probably be something of note in that region later in the season, but not right now. What I am interested in is this impulse of energy up here and what happens as it dips south and we get this front that drapes across the northern gulf. More and more chatter about this, uh, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. You notice that the rest of the tropical Atlantic, at least the western portions of it here, coming out of the main development region, generally speaking, nice and clear, no big deal uh, from any tropical waves coming through. There's one right there. Um, minimal shower activity, upper-level wind still coming out of the west and west-southwest, so not a problem for anything to develop. Looking at the visible satellite of the Caribbean Sea, zoomed in just a little bit. Any interest down here from Trinidad, Tobago, all the way up through the windward to leewards, uh, U.S. British Virgin Islands, just some passing showers, no lingering concentrated large-scale areas of organized rain or thunderstorms or anything like that heading your way. But you do see this tropical wave coming through here. Looks like maybe another one through here somewhere, but they are rather um, innocuous at this point. Pretty brisk trade winds uh, coming through the Caribbean, and that's expected at this time of year. It takes a few more weeks for the pressures to ease off a little bit. And that might start to happen sooner rather than later as a more favorable pattern for development starts to set up over the next week to 10 days or so. All right, so leading into that, let's take a look at the, just a reminder here of this July 1st through the 10th uh, tropical cyclone points of origin. It's getting a little long in the tooth there. They need to update this. Hopefully they will soon. Uh, what I want to point out, though, let's get rid of the telestration and zoom in on this thing if it'll let me. Uh, notice that the northern Gulf of Mexico region here, uh, this is void of any development. It's a little bit farther to the south and then more concentrated towards the southern end of the Gulf and a few areas here smattered off the southeast coast, but nothing right up here. Uh, this is 30 degrees latitude, so you know, 29, 28, maybe 27 latitude line and points north no development in this time frame, the first 10 days, the first third of July. That might change. That There's a possibility that we could see something try to develop in this area in about a week, maybe less. Uh, people have really been talking about this. I've seen it now showing up on prominent meteorologists' Twitter feeds. It's filtered its way out of message boards where the obsessed, and that is not a critical comment, that's a good thing. I like it when people are obsessed with something positive, and in this case, watching the weather is a positive thing. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of filtered its way out of the message boards and into the mainstream, uh, what we call weather Twitter, or I call it the hurricane blogosphere, where people start to talk about it in a more open forum. And... Why? What are we looking at? Well, let's take a look at the European model. Uh, this is the United States here. We'll outline it real quick for you. And I'll kind of leave this up. There's Florida, Panhandle of Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, down to Texas. And we'll go over here to the West Coast just to get everything thorough and complete. All right, so there's the outline of the U.S. And keep your eye, this is 48 hours from last night, so this would be valid Saturday evening, this Saturday evening or tomorrow evening. And what I want you to watch, I'll color it in sky blue, is this little piece of energy right here, very um, benign looking, uh, as you can see there. Not, you know, it's just nothing, seemingly. An impulse uh, at the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, we call this the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere, and that's just representing some energy. You'll probably see it in 48 hours uh, as a cluster of thunderstorms is what it would look like IRL, right? Isn't that what they say in real life? Uh, this is the model version, and in real life it would look like some thunderstorms. So let's move out to 72 hours. 
there's that same cluster right there in uh, south, central, eastern parts of Alabama, etc. We go now to 96 hours. There it is there. And finally at 120 hours. I'll take my telestration away. I think you get the point now. You can see what we're looking at. Um, and you can see the cyclonic turning in the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, the vorticity signature, bundling of energy, etc. You know, that's what I look for. Fairly concentrated here. This is at day five. And so this would be valid next Tuesday evening, uh, Tuesday night, the 9th into the 10th. And you can see the outline of this overall troughiness in here, right? You see that right through there? You can just kind of draw the front through there roughly. You know, that's just my attempt at it. But yeah, this is an area of convergence where the air uh, would be coming together. Um, it's already lower air pressure. There's a front draped across there. And it's draped across very warm water. Very high instability area, uh, fuel. You know, you can just keep piling on the reasons why this could happen. That's never a guarantee that it will happen. Don't confuse could happen with must happen. Those are not mutually exclusive arguments, okay? They are independent of each other. The ingredients are there, and I've said this before. People like it. You want to bake a cake. You want to make cookies. You go get all the ingredients at the store, and you bring them home. That doesn't mean that a cake or cookies will be made, right? Somebody still has to put them together and make them in the oven. Uh, like my son last night, he's home from college and he made a cheesecake <laughs> and he forgot one of the ingredients, had to go back to Harris Teeter and get it. So there you go. Point made. He had everything except uh, cream cheese, a very <laughs> big ingredient for cheesecake. I had no idea that this would work its way into my discussion, but it's a good analogy. Just because something uh, could happen doesn't mean that it must happen. All right. That's on a fortune cookie in some awesome Japanese steakhouse somewhere. All right, so by day six, 144 hours out, yeah, that looks more interesting. It's loosely defined still, uh, but it will be sitting over water temperatures that are about 30 Celsius, 29 to 30 Celsius, uh, a lot of instability, like I mentioned. So this is worth watching. Finally, at day seven, we're talking about a week out, and this is just, you know, okay, Let's see what happens. It's a week away. What do we got? Uh, so just, you know, don't worry about this yet, but make it pique your interest that there may be something to watch. Even the stalled front through this area could bring a period of heavy rain. Maybe there's just waves of low pressure that don't develop into a cyclone, so to speak, a tropical cyclone, and you could get five to seven inches of rain across portions of the Florida Panhandle over here, I-10 corridor into Alabama, Mississippi, maybe Louisiana. We'll see. So that's day seven. I'm not going to show beyond day seven. I mean, even this far out is stretching it. But this is what the European model shows. And just to kind of contrast that or compare it or both to last night's GFS, that's the same time frame on the GFS model, the global forecast system. So the Euro is more concentrated, focused. The GFS a little bit more spread out. You can see the overall shape to the energy down here, you know, whatever. So we'll watch. We'll watch and see. That's the bottom line here. We have something that is, is getting our attention. We have this awesome foresight in the modeling to be able to pick this kind of stuff up. What it becomes, how intense. A lot of people focus on the wind. How strong will it get? Well, you also need to ask, how much rain will it drop? That is equally as important, in my opinion. But we'll get to that later. It's not time yet. Right now, it's just time to watch on a daily basis. And here's a good reason why. All of this 30 Celsius water temperature at the surface, 29 to 30, right up near the shelf water there, close to the shore. And the upper ocean heat content does register through here. Obviously, it's not anything like what we have in the Caribbean, but... It is at the bottom part of the scale. There is upper ocean heat content, a lot of energy. That's what this shows available in the northern Gulf of Mexico. You already knew that. So we'll watch it. We'll see what happens. And uh, I'll talk about it every day going forward. 
All right, real quick, just to remind you, because that's my job, we do have the 2018 documentary on Amazon Prime Video. It's not on DVD. I saw uh, one person uh, left a one-star review because they thought it was on DVD. It's not. I'm, I, I don't have a DVD of it. I'm sorry. Um, get up with Amazon customer service, and hopefully they can refund your money. They wanted it on DVD. It doesn't look good on DVD compared to the full HD on uh, Amazon. But anyhow, this is how you get to it. Search for Tracking the Hurricanes 2018, and uh, it's it's remarkable. I'm telling you, I watched it the other night on my own, uh, my private version of it that I've got, you know, the digital copy on my laptop. And I tell you what, every time I see it, I'm like, wow, I can't believe this really happened. So it's on Amazon Prime Video. Check it out when you get a chance. Real quick, I'm going to do something exciting a little later on. Uh, I've got a new way that I'm going to be doing live video from our vehicle this year. Whatever vehicle we have, we'll rent something. Um, I do have a Chevy Tahoe. It's a 2001 model. It's not the one that I used for all those years. One of our partners purchased it in 2017, and it's identical, year-making model and color, to the one that we used for 430,000 miles. That one no longer works. Um, and so anyway, I've got this other one. It's got our logos on it, but no weather equipment or anything like that. We used it during uh, Florence a little bit last year and then Michael, but it's it's you know 18 years old. Anyhow, I've got a little device set up in it. Uh, it's a long story. Bottom line, I've got a way that I think is really cool where we can stream video from our vehicle this year, and I'm going to test that for you for several hours today live. Uh, it's going to be on Patreon first for the first little while that I uh, have it up, and um, uh, you know maybe 30 minutes to an hour, and then I'll um, publish it on YouTube, uh, restream it, either using Wirecast or another way, whatever, we're working on it. Uh, but basically, you'll be able to watch this on YouTube as well. Um, so look for that. You'll sh if you're a subscriber on YouTube, make sure you click on your notifications to enable them, and you'll be alerted, obviously, when I upload a video or when I go live. And hopefully it'll work. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think you're really, really going to like this. I started streaming live 15 years ago. Katrina was the very first event wall-to-wall, Probably the first person to ever do that in a hurricane. Um, and uh, 15 years later, you know, it's not anything revolutionary. But for me, I think it's going to be really cool, very immersive, and I think you're going to like it. And I'm going to test it today. So look for that within the next 90 minutes or so. All right. Thanks for tuning in from your device of choice. I appreciate it as always. And if you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, Hurricane Track, now is a good time to do it. All right, I am Mark Sedeth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll be on top of what's happening with whatever is going to try to develop in the Gulf. Don't worry about it right now. We'll talk about it some more tomorrow. And I'll see you a little later on today uh, on YouTube or on Patreon as I test this new live streaming method. And we'll talk some more then.